called Beautiful, Magical, Wonderful. and lonely and the clouds surround you there is help on the way in your darkest hours see the flickering lights we're out searching for you you can always count on your friends to help you when you're down and times are tough Cause we can see what you cannot see That great things are almost here Something beautiful, something magical Something wonderful Something magical, something wonderful. Something beautiful, something magical, something wonderful. How small makes a difference in any part for every person, no matter how lonely, there is love in this world. Now the clouds are clearing and the sun is shining, the world smiling on you. And we're all together beyond bad weather And we're on our way home To something beautiful, something magical Something wonderful Something beautiful, something magical Something wonderful Something magical, something wonderful. about blizzards, talk about snow, talk about temperatures 40 odd below, talk about heroes, say Casey Jones, sing Paul Bunyan and other well-knowns, but save ammunition, let it explode for Herman A. Simons and his seven mile road.
Season was December, bitter to behold. Winters up in Michigan get mighty cold. Snow began at daybreak, fell through the gloam. I'd better, said Herman, be getting on home. Started up his truck, and the snow it snowed. Turned on his lights, couldn't see the road. Old Noah had an ark when his trouble struck. Herman had a shelter tacked on his truck. He fried him some eggs, ate them on bread, fueled up his stove, went right to bed. Woke up fresh, perky as a toad, lifted out his shovel to clear him a road. Heaped that shovel full as a hod, inched up his truck a quarter of a rod. Rested a while, ate sardines, slept a few hours, and had sweet dreams. Didn't once figure a chance of being towed, not Herman A. Simons of the Seven Mile Road. Shoveled through the evening, shoveled all night. Didn't stop shoveling till morning light. Shoveled and thawed, settled down to doze, woke up fast when he almost froze. Day after day, load after load, had to keep clearing that seven mile road. Never saw a soul, never heard a sound, shoveled and sweated off 25 pounds. Shoveled to get warm and to keep him alive, felt like a million, was 65. Worked like a woodsman cutting up a load, cleared not a path but a seven mile road. Talk about blizzards, talk about snow, talk about men with get up and go. You can have your heroes. Keep your tales of swingers and sledges, riders of rails. But give me the man with the genuine goods, Shaffle, shoveled half a month out of Michigan woods. Didn't need to holler, didn't have to cry, didn't want to lay right down and die took up his shovel in hand and showed how a mind guy goes to town without being towed if he's Herman A. Simons of the Seven Mile Road. By Norma Farber. She's torn her pantyhose See how fast the run goes She's torn her pantyhose See how fast the rip goes She's got a run in a stocking She's got those pantyhose blues Tries the nail polish to help stop the tear. Mm -hmm. Hopes the nail polish will help stop the stairs. She's got a run in a stocking. She's got those pantyhose blues. Now, a runner's a bummer, you know it keeps coming. It doesn't please. From morning to night, starts at the thigh and works down to the knees. Brick walls and hangnails and watches and rings. It's those things you dread. Just when you start bumping, you jump into something that leaves your threads in shreds. Um, And the tights start to sag Something's going wrong Your big toenail's too long, yeah, yeah, yeah She's got a run in a stocking She's got 
those pantyhose blue. Extra pair just in case. Street lamps. When night slinks like a puma down the sky and the bare windy streets echo with silence, street lamps come out and lean at corners awry, cast in black shadows, oblique and intense, so they burn on impersonal through the night, hearing the hours slowly topple past, like cold drops from a glistening stalactite, until gray planes splinter the gloom at last. Then they go out. I think I noticed once, twas morning, one sole street lamp still bright lit, which with a senile grin, like an old dunce, vied the blue sky and tried to rival it and leering pallid, though its use was done, tried to cast shadows contrary to the sun. Riverbank. Afternoon slides into evening in the narrow city park. I wander towards the riverbank beside a long, low waterfall. Spawning season. The alewife leap and twist, struggle to vault the, the falls. Perched on midstream logs, ravenous seagulls cock their heads and screech defiance. Beside me on the shore lay ocean families, young and middle-aged. I settle on the concrete rim. A young girl sidles up, inspects my strange white face touches my eyes with hers, sits down on the bank beside me, on my left, but not too close. Foreign phrases ebb and flow. Above us on the cemented dam, Asian fishers cast their lines into the surge. A man wades back and forth along the river's edge, trousers rolled up, and empty hands alert to snatch a thrashing streak of silver. Around me, fishing talk, the familiar alien ritual. And the second one is called Spawning Time in the City. I stand with a friend at the end of a concrete dam beside the white and shallow waterfall. A woman with an Asian face, wide grin and ragged teeth, gestures to the fish throwing themselves up the jagged flowing wall. See, see, fish, fish. I laugh, yes, fish. I point, she counterpoints. The seagulls swoop, complain, try to scoop up silver curves. Herring struggling to strew their eggs upstream before they die. She points again. We shift our view down through a metal grail to watch a busy underworld of young tan faces and overflowing fish. Three Laotian men, feet bare, wet to the waist, wade up a zigzag concrete ramp into the fish ladder, netting handfuls of herring. Skilled hands wrench the fish from the writhing net and dump them twisting into a white plastic bucket. We turn to leave. The woman gestures at the fish offering us treasure. Smiling, we gesture back, showing we have no way to keep them safe. Then wave goodbye, leaving gulls and fishermen to harvest the river. Summer. The summer heat sways ripples of anticipation Reality lingers at my fingertips. Life bustles with excitement, leaving splashing waves on the shore of one's mind. Temperatures rising with levels of anxiety. Thunder clouds fill out the skies with dismay. As we travel the summer roads of anticipation, each in our very own way, 
The laughter, chatter, love, and friendship mingle as one, dispelling and feeling a warmth in the air, raindrops falling softly on the morning, love, birds singing melody of rhythmic blues, green pastures with ripening fruits, harvesting crops that will nourish our being, allowing the beauty of summer to radiate within our lives, beautiful sunrise and sunset enlightens our paths. Herein lies the beauty of our summer days. The romantic waves of love, romantic waves dispel upon the shores of my mind as a smile embraces the breaks, closeness to the naturalness of love, heights of intimacy deepen within the sandcastles of my mind. Naturalness of love flows between the sandcastles of my fingertips. Emotions of happiness intertwined with those of reality. Seashells are all cast with their own individuality, washed up on the shore with years of enduring strength, yet beautiful through the eyes of the beholder. Toss pebbles into the seas of happiness. Our wholeness has found togetherness. Our love has found oneness. Dreams are now upon the visions of our realities. True love shall endure all. Thank you. Uh, this is a summer poem. It's called Wild Blueberries Call. The blueberries, they're calling, calling, calling me now. Can you hear them? They're calling, calling, calling me right now. We are ripe, very ripe, very blue, true, true blue. And we sit here waiting, waiting for you. Will you come? Will you pick us? For what have we grown? We need you to pick us to truly feel known. We grow by the wayside every year upon year, and we wait to be picked without any fear. Can you hear us? We're calling, we're calling you now. In years past, the people heard us, and they all came at once. They ate and they picked us, one after one. The children, they're glued to TVs and computers. The moms are on iPhones, the air is all a Twitter. And our calls are not heard anymore, but just a few. We're lonely and our berries are falling into the dew. Look at our bounty, we grow them to share. We grow to share berries with humans who care. And without this cycle happening, we wonder what to do. Are we needed any longer? Does it matter to you? Moms go to the grocery and pick up a box. That's the way we pick blueberries in the frozen food spot. We wild ones are small, but we put up a holler. Come pick us and eat us. We're worth all the bother. So we ask you to listen. Please listen to our call. When we're ripe, we need you to come and come all. Thank you. The first one is called Thrill. When I was eight, my Nana fell down the cellar stairs and died. She was laid out in her living room, and when nobody was watching, I approached the casket, touched the back of her cold hand. Some days after that, a soulful piano, pulsing under a sweet, sad tenor, poured from the radio into my bedroom. The moon stood still, his moon, my moon. The wind in the willow tree, I'd climbed that tree, heard that sweet melody, knew how its swinging branches should, could shelter a girl. Though we're apart, you're part of me still. Nana, part of me still. Fats sang, so true, I promised myself that someday I would go there. I would find my thrill on Blueberry Hill. Second one, hooked. At 17, I was the youngest in our crowd and couldn't get into that shoebox bar in Old Town where we could see through the window John Lee Hooker in a spotlight, a black Buddha sitting stiffly on a straight back chair. My friends went in. I stayed outside, watching, waiting. 
He wore a black fedora, string tie, magenta shirt, cradled his guitar on his thighs, and stared out into the smoke blue dark at me, it seemed. I touched the window. My fingertips quivered with the bass line. Boom, 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 boom. He moaned and growled and slapped the strings of that guitar like a man come back from Song over, he touched the brim of his hat and nodded. He meant me for standing outside and listening, for touching that glass wall between us. He meant I'd love the blues forever, meant I'd forget him never. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you. Ubiquitous. Childhood. Glistening, narrow, sharp, pointed, inch or two inches long, silver steel, white threaded eye, musty earthy scent, bracelet necklace crown, dandelion, cooked like spinach, slightly bitter to the tongue, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, sandy, salt sea, ocean, soil taste, butter, table salt, disguise, dandelion leaves. Never brewed, never imbibed, dandelion wine. Parenthood, already round and bright, sunny, yellow, cheerful sight, in the green, amongst the paler yellows, blues, whites. Closing up for sleep at night, how so very people-like, dandelion. Toddler to early grade school age, daughter's fresh flower pick for me didn't last long in water inside, but long enough, creating memories, dandelion. Passing to the next life phase, delicate feathery parachute with seeds, blow we named them, dandelion no more. Some people adult-like Call them of no value, to be eradicated, lawn mowed over, unmercifully, weeds. In their oh so perfect, too perfect, painstakingly sculptured, <clears throat> manicured, wasted water, lawns and yards, epithet, dandelion. No longer bright, no longer cheerful, no longer yellow, no longer sight, dandelion. No longer valued, food and wine, child's bracelet, necklace, crown, flower gift, garden of enchantment, dance of entertainment, blow, dandelion. How very people like dandelion. I'll be back, ubiquitous said, dandelion. How very child, people like. Dandelion. Thank you. In chains. Feeling the stones beneath me, in the dungeon of my mind, I struggle, hopeless, for release, for the key I cannot find. I'm trapped by my own doing, by resistance and stupidity, but I only know one way to set myself free. You pound your fists against the door, and I knock from the other side. This small piece of me is your consolation prize. You're ready to see me free and keep me off parole. But logic as warden keeps this prison, and the inmate is my soul. I have the key in my pocket, but my hands are cuffed and restrained. I scream and tear, but can't get out. This prison is my brain. I want to show you what I can say to free me from this place. But I'm the warden, inmate, and eternal judge. I'm my own saving grace. Open the door, let the light shine through, gold on my undeserving soul. I can free myself, break these chains, but I'm to never be soft again. Lost forever, never to show, a shadow in the light.
If I don't read Kay's email while working in a cafe today, then soft wind on my face. If the note isn't prefaced by her declination of my invitation, then alternator current. The fireplace calls liar when I pass by. The unlit sculpture slumped in its chair, in its char. Show us your heart, a beach stone. Show us your smile, a coiled rattler. Love is a blouse of dismissed calls. It flatters. What island are we from that with just two of us, we don't see each other? A nanosecond is only as big as a pencil. If the mouth has no brain behind it, then blueberries. We have no reason to leave, so we stay. If Kay's father isn't in hospital, monarch butterfly. The fire sculpture is stacked, waiting for Kay. And if tears, then mother. Kay proposes bitter, I say not bitter, a bear trading a paper flower for a newspaper, raw honey, clover honey, orange blossom. If not my mother, then wipe tears from the face of a woman typing in a cafe. If I call, then dead woodchuck. Show me the tissues. Show me the tissues, the scraps that mop the pain. <laughs>